Before we move on to the document you'll be working with to add all the various features and interactivity, I want to show you how I got to that stage. So you can either go to the File New option or you can just click on More Presets when the home screen's visible. I'm going to go to Mobile and uh, View All Presets. I'm actually going to pick um, the iPad. Now, I, iPad in here, there's lots of different iPad versions, but the standard 2024 by 768 version. As lovely as it sounds to create iPad Pro sized publications that are 10 and a half inch or 13 inch in size, there aren't that many tablet devices that will accommodate that kind of screen resolution. And even on some desktops as well, what you'll probably find is that it will scale it down in size and so your content will look small than perhaps you would prefer to. So iPad 768 2024 as it's shown here. I'll go across the right hand side and then I'll just call this iPad template for the purposes of this. Uh, I'm going to change the orientation to landscaped. I'm also going to make sure this publication is not facing pages. I don't want left and right side of pages with this one. I just want to have single facing pages. I do want to have eight in number. I don't want a primary text frame. Then in terms of columns, I'm going to change that to six. And the column gutter, I'm going to change that one to 18 pixels, that is. And then the margins around the side of 36 in here, I've always found them to be just about right for my purposes. It's enough of a size to just pull your content away from the edge of the device screen and give you a nice clear area. Of course, we don't need bleed or slug because this is not a print based document. I'll go down to the bottom and click on create. I'm going to head to my layers panel and set the structure in here by changing the current layer name with a double left click to images. I'll change the color of that layer to brick red. Then add a second layer and double click and change that one to text. Make sure that's set to light blue. Add a third layer. This one's going to be called interactive and it's going to be color coded orange. Click OK. And then a fourth and final layer is going to be called grids with a lovely green color to that. Click OK. And there we have our content. And the reason for all of this is because we want to try and keep any static content stored in images and text. But wherever we have, say, for example, interactive content, then we can put it all into the interactive layer. And this especially is helpful if you have a print based version and you wish to just have a print file that you wish to export. Then if you want to create a digital edition of it, turn on your interactive layer in the layers panel and then you can publish online. So you get the best of both worlds. I'll just put the layers panel at the top right hand side. Make sure that the grid layer is active in the layers panel. And then I'll head down to the pages panel, hover over the A master page and double left click to make sure that's the page that's active. Layout and create guides. I'm going to set the number of rows to five with a gutter value matching the column gutter value of 18 pixels. Make sure that's set to fit between margins. We can turn the preview just to see what that looks like in there. And with a grid that is six columns by five rows and the gutter values set at 18 pixels, this will give us lots of flexibility. And those slightly wider gutter values will just allow us to separate content on screen because it's going to look a little bit different on screen compared to a print file. So we just want to give everything a lot of breathing space. I'll go to OK and then lock that grid layer to make sure we don't move the guides. Head down to pages and then change the master page name. And I'm going to change that to structure. And then click OK. And that essentially gives us our template with the grids and guides and the number of pages in that we need in this document with a layer structure that's going to respond well for interactive based content. Before closing it down, I'll just save this file, which will be stored in from our desktop, journalism, layouts, and then I'll just leave it set with the current name in here, iPad template. And my current version is InDesign 2021 um, and then I'll click on save. And then I'll close this file down.